Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, September 9th, 2011. The moderate to high level of activity has continued over the last 24 hours with a couple more M flares. But first I'd like to thank you all for the support and help that you've given in producing these videos. My channel passed a couple of very significant milestones this week in topping over a quarter of a million views and also having 2,000 regular subscribers. Again, thank you all very much and it's much appreciated. But now to our trivia question. It's in the form of a cryptic clue. It's hairy and currently near something that's normally in the closet. What is it? The answer will be given at the end. Since yesterday we've had five C flares and two M flares, one of which is underway as I prepare this video. All of them seem to be from region 1283. So let's take a look at the regions and see what's been going on. We have three officially numbered sunspot regions on the disk at the moment and one as yet unnumbered region down in the southeast. Let's take a look at region 1283 first. According to NOAA's numbers, the area of this region has dropped by about 15% in the last 24 hours, though I think probably some of that might be due to increase in foreshortening. Comparing yesterday's picture with today's, we can see that there's been some development around the leading part of the region. Uh, and that the small spot in the north has moved yet further east and has grown somewhat. As long as these sunspot motions continue, we will still get large flares from this region. Next, let's take a look at region 1287 in the south. According to NOAA's numbers, the area of this region has dropped by 40% overnight, so it's decaying quite rapidly. And you can see some of that decay in the breakup of the leader spot when you compare yesterday's image to today's. Next, we'll take a look at region 1289 near the northeast limb. According to NOAA figures, this region has grown quite considerably, but again we need to take foreshortening into account here. However, when you compare today's picture with yesterday's, you can see that there has been quite some significant development in the satellite spots trailing the region. So there is some real growth going on here. So this is a region worth keeping an eye on. Lastly, we take a look at the new region that's formed in the southeast. It seems to have grown quite rapidly over the last 24 hours. So this sunspot region is certainly worth monitoring to see if it develops over the next couple of days. So let's see if we can tie all this together by watching the evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours using the uh, sunspot and magnetic data from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And again I would advise going to full screen mode to watch the details of these developments. And particularly watch region 1283 and the new region forming in the southeast. Once again the AIA movies of the transition region and corona are not very useful. So I'm just going to show them for completeness, but there's not very much there to see. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, you can see a huge trans-equatorial coronal hole right at this center there. But also there's some indication that there are regions coming over the northeast limb. And these regions must be at least one or two days out as yet. So these probably are quite large regions. So this looks promising for the development of future activity. The Soho coronagraph data shows that we have continued to have a cascade of beautiful coronal mass ejections both off the east and the west limbs. In the larger field of view C3 instrument, we can see that Venus on the upper left is moving out of the field of view or will be gone in the next couple of weeks. The solar wind as yet has shown no sign of any of these coronal mass ejections that might have been heading our way. The speed of solar winds dropped to nearly 300 km per second, the temperature is way down and the density is almost non-existent. However, the high energy electron flux is still very high and we're still in the tail end of the proton event from the first of the X-flares and no sign of any protons coming from the second X-flare. The auroral zone is very quiet and the KP index is varying between 0 and 1, which means that geospace conditions are surprisingly quiet. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B5 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 47, the radio sun intensity is about 110 solar flux units, solar wind speed has dropped to 300 km per second with a density of much less than 1 and geospace conditions are very quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M and X flares are still possible, the sunspot number will remain relatively low, coronal mass ejections are still likely, the solar wind speed will go higher and the geomagnetic storm is still I think likely. In the composite coronal image, you can see those regions approaching the east limb, both in the northern and southern hemisphere. However, they are still at least a day or two out from actually coming over the limb. So did anybody get the cryptic clue? It's hairy, and I'm sure many of you know that the word for comet means that something that is long-haired or hairy. 
So is the name of a comet that we're looking for. Now what about the second part of the clue? Current in year, something that should be in the closet. Well, a number of things would be in the closet, but one of the things is a coat hanger, and there is a small cluster of stars called the coat hanger. So the question amounts to, what is the name of the comet that's currently near the coat hanger cluster? And the answer to that is Comet Gerard. Much kudos to anybody that got that serpentine logic right. Anyway, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.